25. You know, the Christmas story uh, every year for me, uh, after all these years of ministry, uh, it never grows old. It's always new. Uh, what a blessed and joyful time it is uh, to celebrate the birth of our Lord. Hear these words. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations in, with her until she had born a son, and they called his name Jesus. This is God's word for us today. Many of you know I started ministry at a very young age. I was in my late teen years uh, when I first became a licensed pastor. And part of the requirements in being a licensed pastor, you had certain classes that you had to go to. And one of those classes, of course, was a preaching class. And licensed pastors from all across our state gathered, and we, would have, we had this preaching class. Well, one of the things you have to do in preaching class, as was the case with this one, is you had to preach in front of the class. About 10 minutes they would give you. They also were videotaping you so that you could be properly critiqued following your sermon. I met a gentleman there at the preaching class. He was a licensed pastor from southern West Virginia. He was a coal miner like many people in the Methodist church who become licensed pastors. Uh, he was, it was late in life. He was bivocational. He was serving little country churches uh, down there in southern West Virginia. Very mild-mannered, quiet, almost shy. But it came his turn to preach, and he was anything but shy. I don't know if any of you are familiar with mountain preaching, revival preaching, but he had it down. I'm telling you, when he stepped in the pulpit and started giving his message, and I tell you, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the one who, just like that, he had the cadence. Now, if you're not familiar with that, it might have been a little shocking to you, but I grew up that way in many ways. Uh, they had this cadence, the mountain preaching. It was very, very intense and emotional. And I remember when he finished, the professor was teaching the class in a very dry voice, in critiquing, said, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite as demonstrably animated as that. Well, the old fella looked at him and said, I don't rightly know what you're talking about. <laughs> because he didn't even understand the wording that the fella had used. And so the professor, I remember almost in a condescending tone, was, he goes, I guess I'm saying you're more like a cartoon character up there with that kind of animation. The old fellow didn't blink. I remember in response, he said, well, a few weeks ago I was preaching, and at the end, two young boys came forward and gave their life to Jesus Christ. So he said, if I have to be a cartoon character, to share the good news of Jesus Christ the way I feel I'm called to share it, then I reckon that's okay. I reckon that's okay. Indeed, it was. And sometimes, as you know, those of you here regularly, I get a little animated and emotional, demonstrative in my own preaching, but it seems to especially overtake me at Christmas time. I can't help myself. You shall call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. His name is Emmanuel, God's solid sign, God with us. If that doesn't animate you, what will? Yes, I'm a little animated. I don't have the Appalachian cadence that my friend had. And you can thank God today because in the mountain preaching of that day, 45 minutes or an hour is the standard sermon. You're going to get out of here in about 15 minutes or so. But it has to be animated. Why? Why? Well, I just think that 
in deference to my friend, cartoon faith and Christmas faith, they have a lot in common. And the fact is, all of us are called to experience that cartoon faith this year. Why? Well, think about it for a moment. An animated cartoon. It's a sketch that comes to life. It's a sketch that comes to life. And so here in Matthew 1, we have a sketch of the story. Many of the signs and symbols that we have at Christmas time, they're just a, a, an outline, if you will, of the story. But ultimately, it's when that story comes to life that the difference is made. It's when we are enlivened by the story, made alive by the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, that the Christmas miracle and Christmas faith really begins to happen. So this sketch, we, in the Gospels even, we don't have the whole story. But I promise you, if you open your life to the Christ child, he will bring life to your life. So maybe all of us are called to that kind of animated faith. Maybe not externally, but certainly internally. That is our call indeed. I remember I had a traveling art teacher when I was in elementary school, Mr. Barry. Mr. Barry did something after we learned a little bit, and I, I was a terrible student, a terrible artist. I did not have that gift. But one of the things that he would do from time to time, he'd put a big piece of poster board up front. And after we'd learned something, he would call on someone, come up and, and, and sketch that out for us. Maybe it was a, a house, and we needed to give it depth and dimension or perspective that we had learned. So we would go up and do our best to sketch a house in the way that he had taught us. Of course, most of the time it was terrible. But he never said anything. Whoever it was, we, let's say I, I sketched a house, did the best I could. But all of a sudden, Mr. Barry would step up to the poster board, and he would start sketching using what we had, and he would continue to draw and to sketch and add. And the first thing you know, when he stepped away from the poster board, here's a beautiful, beautiful picture. And I feel like that is what happens at Christmas. Our lives sometimes are nothing more than a rough draft, sometimes rougher than others. Sometimes our rough, our rough draft is just a sketch of what we would really like our lives to be. But friends, know this, the Savior of the world is arriving, and he steps up to the canvas of your life, and he adds his touch. He brings life to your life, and because of that, we are able to experience the wondrous, wondrous joy that comes our way. Cartoon faith, it's a sketch that comes to life, and I pray that the outline of the Christmas story would come to life in your heart as you open yourself again to the miracle of the Christ child. Secondly, cartoon faith, an animated cartoon. It's a still photo or a drawing that is given movement. It's given movement. All of a sudden, that which was just a still drawing in place is given movement. Some of you are younger, I don't know, even know if they do this anymore, but one of the ways they used to demonstrate in art to us the, the, the concept of animation is that they would take a book. On each corner of the book, there was a little drawing, and the little drawing was a little different on each page. And then they would have us look at that and leaf through the book like this. Some of you maybe remember that. And all of a sudden, that little figure there starts to move as each page is turned, as each and as each little drawing becomes animated through the turning of the pages. They were given movement. And I say to you, as you turn through the pages of your life, some of them will be difficult pages, some of them will be wonderful pages, but allow the Savior of the world, the Christ child born in Bethlehem, to give movement to that. And if, we, if the Christmas story matters to us at all, we are called to not only allow God to move us, but to be the movement of that story out into our world. So that it's not just a stagnant, sterile view. What does it mean to be a Christian? When someone sees a very down-in-the-mouth, stoic person. We are called to give movement to that story out in our world. If we don't give movement to the Christmas story in our world, who will? No one. No one. Sherry Bagby, she works in a children's hospital. She tells the story of working a few years ago during the holidays. 
There was a little girl, she was eight years old. She struggled with a blood disorder, so she had been in and out of her unit many times. She knew her very well. She said she always carried with her a little tiny baby that she called her baby Jesus. Turns out her parents had actually got that for her when she was five years old. At eight years old, she still carried him around, this baby Jesus wrapped up in her arms. Each time to the hospital, she would bring this little baby Jesus with her. It was truly one of her most prized possessions. Sherry Bagby says the day came, it was the morning of Christmas Eve, that the little girl was to be dis- dismissed from the hospital, discharged. But as they were walking down the hall, all of a sudden little Chrissy stopped. And she turned around and she started running back towards her room. She had her baby Jesus with her. But instead of stopping with her at her room, she went to the adjoining room. And before the parents could make it back down the hallway to sort of corral her and get her out, she reemerged from the room without her baby Jesus. Turns out she had met a little boy there who was actually struggling with leukemia whose name was Jacob. And when she came from the room without her most prized possession, she simply said, I think he needs it more than I do. And she left the baby with him. Friends, the little girl, perhaps knowing it, perhaps not knowing it, she gave movement to the manger scene. She gave movement to the Christmas story. No longer is it just a a drawing or a photograph to be viewed, but you could actually see it moving in our world as she offered the very best that she had to offer. That's what we're called to do, my friends, to allow this story to move us so that we become God's movement in the world, pointing other people to the Savior of the world, the one who has come, Emmanuel, God with us. Finally, an animated cartoon. Someone's vision takes on a voice and a name. Someone's vision takes on a voice and a name. Now, I can still tell you my favorite cartoon characters. I can still tell you. I can't do the voices like some of my friends can, but their name and their voice, if you enacted that, I would know immediately who it was. The children among us today could tell us their favorite cartoon characters. Someone's vision takes on a name and a voice. And friends, that's what happens in Matthew. God's vision for you. God's vision for our world. His vision is why we light the Advent candles, hope, peace, love, joy. That's God's vision for our world. And finally, God decides if he's going to reach this hard-headed mass of humanity that is so prone to distraction and chaos, then he has to take their form. He has to come among us. And so he gives voice and name to his vision. His name shall be called Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The voice says, this means Emmanuel. God with us. Well, here here in our own sanctuary, the piano is just an inanimate object. But Nancy Steele steps behind there and begins to play those keys. That piano finds a voice, doesn't it? These bells are just inanimate objects. But this morning, our gifted ringers step up to those bells and all of a sudden, those bells take on a voice. Friends, that's what God desires for your life. He desires for it to take place in your life, this voice, this name of Jesus, to enliven you and help you to experience all that God has for you to experience. Amidst our world today, fraught with conflict and chaos, Hate and mean-spiritedness. Here we go with the Christmas story. And the question comes, is it going to matter? Is it going to animate you enough to live the story each day? In a time of great conflict in our own nation, in the middle of the Civil War, 
Longfellow wrote a poem that later became a song. In fact, his own son was injured in the Civil War, critically injured. But on Christmas Day in 1863, he wrote the poem, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Do you remember the melody when that became a song? I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black accursed mouth the cannon thundered in the south, and with the sound the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the heartstones of a continent and made forlorn the houses born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair... I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Longfellow was saying, the right into the face of chaos and lack of peace. The Christmas message that rings out, that's where it belongs. And again, friends, I say to you, these candles, hope, peace, love, joy. Maybe I'm like a cartoon character because I'm animated enough and perhaps foolish enough to believe that this is indeed the hope of our world. And I will never give up that hope, regardless of how chaos may try to drown out the song, regardless of how conflict may cause us to say, why sing the song anyway? I refuse to give a ho- up the hope that is ours at Christmas time. This miracle that comes among us. Why? Because his name will call, be called Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. His name is Emmanuel. God with us. So we're called to this, like my friend, cartoon faith. To bring the story to life. To be the movement of the story in our world. And allow God's vision of peace on earth and good news for all people. That voice and that name to become a part of who we are. And friends... If that means I'm like a cartoon character, if it means that someone in this world would come to know Christ through our witness together, then I reckon that that's okay. In fact, it's more than okay. May it be so in our lives and in our church. Let us pray. Lord God, you have granted us the greatest gift of all. We pray that during this Christmas season, the manger scene would become more than a scene. That it would become a part of our lives. Bring us to life and give us movement and allow that voice and name of Jesus, Emmanuel, to motivate who we are and how we live. Forgive us for times in which we seem to have preferred the chaos. Break into our hearts and world again with your wondrous message of the Christ child. In his name we pray. Amen.